Oh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It uh, says it, doesn't it? Well, I think it's got to say it today. Because? Who's yeah. that for? Well, it's for you, really. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. for our lovely Digby that's coming to see us today. Mm. In Isleworth, <laughs> South West London, yeah. Scott, nurse Nathan yeah. and receptionist Elle yeah. are putting up a brave front as they prepare yeah. to meet a new patient. Mm. And do I get any danger money for this? Nothing to worry about at all. Yeah, Nathan. teddy bear. Teddy bear. Don't worry about it, Nathan. Here we go. They're looking nervous, Elle. Hold up the sign. Hello. Hi. Mother and daughter Sharon and Amy have already warned them about the intimidating behaviour of their six-year-old Rottweiler, Digby. The problem is the Rottweiler has now developed a mass in his chest. Good boy. Good boy. Owner Sharon knew she had to find a vet who would take a risk. Digby at home is an absolute softy. He is sweet, he's affectionate and he loves a cuddle. But take him out anywhere to meet any other dog or anybody else but the immediate family, and that 50 kilograms of love turns into 50 kilograms of raw aggression. To ensure the safety of his staff, Scott has decided to be the only stranger in the consultation room. Even the camera crew must film from outside. Sharon, why don't you jump on that side? Yeah. There you go. Digby hasn't seen a bit for quite a few years, and uh, the last vet he saw didn't know what to do. Um, he was nervous of him, um, but luckily we found Scott. Sit down. Hello. No. Sharon came in to see me after she saw Bam Bam and the way that I treated him in the first series of Vet on the Hill. Calm down. But there's a massive difference between the feisty Bam Bam... Oh, no and the all-powerful 110-pound oh, Digby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's okay. All right, settle down. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going anywhere. A lot of people would say straight away, that's an aggressive dog. It should be put down. And I understand that. But the situation here is that they got a dog that was friendly and happy and healthy as a puppy. It has grown up to be aggressive. And it's aggressive for one reason, because it's fearful. It is not innately evil. This dog is a friendly dog that gets scared, and he gets scared, and then he gets aggressive. We always make sure for him, we put a muzzle on and he's safe when he goes out. He's just being responsible, really. I'm trying to rush this relationship, which is never a good idea, is it? Okay. Because when we take him out, you get people to stare. And they do make some nasty comments. Why don't you put that dog down? Yeah. It makes me angry. No, we never ever put him down. We love him to bits. <laughs> we've had him as a puppy. We've shown no aggression to him whatsoever. So it was inbred from the mother. <laughs> Come out with him. <laughs> oh, all right, stop it. As Digby remains alert and agitated, Scott's still a long way from being able to examine the lump on the Rottweiler's chest. Soppy old thing, aren't you, eh? This job sometimes throws curveballs, and aggressive dogs come in, aggressive cats come in, and you've got to treat them, you've got to deal with them, so you've got to find a way to make it work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. All right, all right. Right. All right. At Isleworth, Scott's slowly trying to calm down the aggressive Digby so he can examine a mass on his chest. So, Amy, so tell me about the lump. Like, when did you first find it? I think it was about three or four months ago. Yeah, yeah. Ever since, I've been trying to find a vet. Owners Sharon and Amy have not dared take the Rottweiler to a vet since their last visit years ago ended badly. He was very nervous, moving his arms around. He couldn't get up close to Digby. When he did, he spoke, and then Digby went berserk. Oh, he's a good, brave boy. After 30 minutes in the consultation room, Scott makes his first attempt to feel Digby's chest. Oh, give you a bit of a tickle there, hey? Hey? Oh. OK, all right, I know. I'm not trying to win the argument straight away. I know. I know. I'm sorry. The whole time, he's lunging at me. I'm just telling myself, be calm, don't react, don't move, stay still. Oh. All right. All right. Am I scared? Are you kidding? I'm bricking it. 
50 kilograms of raw muscle power coming at you with bared teeth and growling. <laughs> and every instinct is saying, keep your distance. <laughs> but then I look at Sharon and Amy and I see their faces just literally saying, please help us, you are our last chance. After another 20 minutes, a breakthrough. But you know what I can see with him is I can really see that he is actually a sweetheart. I can see that. Scott finally appears to be gaining Digby's trust. You're trying to be aggro, but I can see you're sweet and lovely, really, aren't you? And look what you're letting me do. Oh, he's a sweet boy. Oh, he's a sweet boy. I mean, the good thing with Scott was that he did remain calm and he didn't have eye contact and he did manage to stroke Digby, which no stranger has ever done. I couldn't believe it, really. I'm just using some acupuncture points as well. There's one on the tip of his ears that just chills him out a little bit. They're always nice. Oh, I feel very honoured. I must say that when I was finally able to touch Digby for the first time, it was exhilarating. I mean, it was like touching a wild animal. And to give him a little scratch under the chin, honestly, it gave me goosebumps. It was amazing. What a handsome big pussycat, eh? Big 50 kilogram big teeth pussycat. Good boy. Yeah. It was lovely having the love in with Digby, but it was always gonna end and it was going to end in the form of a sharp needle in his butt. Do you want to put him into this corner maybe and then he can't yeah. push back? And that was never going to bring out his happy side. I went from hero to zero, but sadly it needed to be done to knock him out, but he wasn't impressed. Done. <laughs> oh, I'm a, definitely a swear word that I can't say on a mate. But with Digby's adrenaline pumping out of control, the huge quantity of sedation is not enough. And Digby is still a threat. It was incredible to see just how much drugs this dog took. He was like a rogue elephant. It's all right. Nice sleepy time now. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of miles away in Isleworth, <laughs> Scott is attempting to examine a suspicious lump on Digby's chest. But despite sedation, the huge 110 pound Rottweiler is still putting up a fight. Today is all about getting to grips with the lump and actually just removing it. Normally, there'll be a whole bunch of steps and examinations that we do prior to this kind of surgery, that's just not an option with Digby. So what I need to do today is knock him out, I need to remove the lump and hopefully send them home with good news. All this activity will actually make him go down in a second. He'll, he's more likely to crash and uh, sleep. Now he's energised himself, blood supply is flowing, those drugs will kick in a little more. So after two injections of sedation, which would have been enough to knock out a rhino, he finally is calm enough that I can get an IV anaesthetic into him. One, two, three. Good boy. Now we've got to get him down the stairs and I'm walking down thinking, this better not be cancer. Not only because it's dreadful news for any owner, but from Digby's point of view, how the hell am I ever going to treat this dog if it is cancer? So fingers crossed it comes out of something not to worry about. Oh yeah, I can feel it now, yeah. yeah. It's quite a, quite a decent size. Yeah, it's a big one and getting bigger. Okay, let's get going. Okay. So let's see what this nasty little thing has in store for us. too bad to me if I cut through the middle. Now that looks a hell of a lot like fat. Nice, healthy, white, glistening fat. So that means there's almost certainly to be a lipoma. Nothing to worry about, which is great news for Digby. Mate, you don't need any more vets, do you? <laughs> no. 
Straight away, I think Sharon and Amy are going to be over the moon. They're going to be so happy. I mean, this is their boy. This is their love. And the fact that this is one surgery that we can perform, we can fix the problem straight away, and he potentially doesn't need to come back and see me, is good news. OK. Good boy. That's it. All done. Digby will now sleep off his anaesthetic in the recovery room. But Scott remains wary. Right, he woke up very quickly. <laughs> and I'm going to exit. Upstairs, Sharon and Amy are waiting for the verdict. Hi, guys. Hi, Scott. So, you look very expectant and very worried, but, in fact, it's all good news. It looks like a fatty growth, which is called lipoma, um, which is... Really good news. I should be seeing smiles. It should be good. seeing smiles. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it is good news. It is good news, isn't it? I'm glad. It's nothing to worry about. I've put sutures that don't need to be removed. So literally, it's a case of taking him home yeah. and uh, hopefully living a, a happy and healthy life. I'm glad. I was worried with you. I thought it would be something more serious. Yeah. But I can see he's definitely got a kind heart in there. He's just quite misunderstood. He's a lovely dog. He's, he's fantastic at home. I'm good about him. But I'm just really glad that I've been able to hand back your beloved dog with my two hands intact. That's quite yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plus yeah. side. And without a lump on his chest. Yeah. It means a lot for what you've done. There's no other vet that we actually see him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's, That's very not. kind. Thanks very much. Uh, I mean, I mean, you're perfect. You're a perfect vet. Oh, thank <laughs> you. you. That's so yeah. sweet. Oh, thanks. Well, that, that, that honestly means a lot. Got me choked up a bit there. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. No, I don't think I'm anything special. I'm literally just a vet doing his job, but uh, I'm glad that she was happy. All right, so he's just through here. Scott's going to feel Wait. even happier when Digby's on his feet and walking out the front door. Digby, baby. Digby, sweetheart. But he's definitely leaving that assignment to the immediate family. I think many people might find the fact that I treated Digby controversial. People might say that I shouldn't have given him any treatment at all. He's aggressive and he should have been put down. Good job. All right, ladies. Well, I would say to those people that he is a much loved member of Sharon's family. They adore him, but they know that he's got problems and they've put steps in place to ensure that he's safe and everyone else around him is safe also. So I would say to them, I'll look after Digby and you look after your own dog. All the best. Bye, diggers. <laughs> oh, come on. oh, man. Good boy. Oh, that'll take it out of a vet, that will. Jeez. Oof. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Come on. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.